This is Rich Galassini, and welcome to another episode of Piano Tastings. Today I'm sitting here with Michael Spreeman at the NAM Show, which is National Associations of Music Merchants, and his display of his Ravenscroft pianos. Michael, thanks for hosting Piano Tastings. Rich, it's my pleasure. Thanks for coming by. Oh, my pleasure too. Now, we have a lot of mutual friends. I've admired you from afar. I've played your pianos. But this is actually the very first time we're sitting and talking, isn't it? It is, it is. Tell me the story. Tell me the story behind the Ravenscroft piano. Well, the story starts about uh, 26 years ago. Uh, I was the head technician at Arizona State University. Okay. I was doing some rebuilding, a lot of concert work. And I met a gentleman named Bob Ravenscroft. Mm -hmm. Bob Ravenscroft is a jazz pianist. He's a free jazz pianist. And uh, Bob kind of challenged me as a technician to uh, do some things with him so that he could do some things on his piano that he couldn't do before. Uh, this led into uh, basically a lot of action work on his piano uh, till eventually we had uh, an infamous uh, lunch where I said, Bob, you have a choice. Your choice is either you have to buy a new piano or what if. Mm -hmm. And the what if was, what if I could find a, a, just an old concert grand with a, all I need is a rim and a plate and we'll kind of build that from the ground up to do what it is that you're wanting to do. So he picked door B and uh, that's what we did, and uh, the project took about a year. I found a, it was actually a 1926 Steinway D mm -hmm. in Houston, and uh, it looked like it had been run over by a caterpillar, but it had a, it had a solid rim and a solid plate, and but most of the case parts were gone, so we uh, hauled that back to my shop in Arizona mm -hmm. and uh, did a new soundboard and changed the scale design and did some action things, and. Uh, and Bob loved it, you know, and, and through the years, um, as my career changed and I, I, and I traveled to different areas, we stayed in touch and I continued to uh, maintain his piano. So from that original piano that you built, how long was it before you built another Ravenscroft? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so I would say it was about uh, 23 years, uh, give or take, uh, that, that um, Bob had moved back to Arizona from San Diego, Yes, uh, had flown me in to work on his piano. It was a Sunday morning and uh, we were getting ready to go back to the airport and, and he said, Michael, have you ever thought about building your own pianos? And I said, well, Bob, guys like me don't really think about building their own pianos. I said, it can, it can take a million dollars to do a, a prototype. And he said, well, my wife and I have thought a lot about this and uh, you basically have changed my life and changed my career and the way I play. And we would like to offer you some startup money, basically kind of a 0% uh, loan, if you would be willing to uh, build your own pianos. And I said, well, that's pretty speculative, Bob. <laughs> I said, I said even, even if it was my own money, I'm not sure that uh, in this market, in this day and age, that I would do that. And what year was this? Uh, this was 2004, exactly 10 years ago. Okay. And uh, so I was working at time, uh, at the time I was working in uh, Utah uh, with Rick Baldison. Yeah. And uh, so I went back and took about two weeks and thought it through and called Bob and said, okay, let's give it a shot. And uh, my philosophy has always been nothing ventured, nothing gained. And if you're willing to venture a little bit, you stand to gain a little bit. If you're willing to venture everything and just go out on a limb and give it your all, uh, there's a lot, lot to be gained. And by that, I don't mean financially. I mean uh, just the challenge that's involved in something like that. Sure. So, yeah, it was quite a quantum leap to go from technician rebuilder into doing what we're, we're doing today, as so, you well know. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So let me ask you just a couple of questions. From your perspective, what is different about the Ravenscroft piano than what is offered by, I mean, there's a lot of great pianos out there. I love a lot of instruments. Yeah. What's different about the Ravenscroft? Well, uh, the time that we take to build the pianos is about right. a thousand hours. And mm -hmm. standard industry time for high-end performance pianos is more in the 250 hour range. So we pretty much obsess over every step of the, of the process. Uh, the piano itself, as far as being different, you know, it, every piano, of course, in and of itself is different. Yes. Uh, 
the, the original idea of the business was that I was going to custom build a piano to whatever each consumer wanted. Mm -hmm. and as so I, you would come up with a different design exactly, for, each. Exactly, for, for everybody. Yeah. So, and uh, I thought this was a great, uh, you know, a great business plan. Well, it wasn't. It, it's it was, a great idea. <laughs> so, it is a great idea. And uh, so I started in 2004. It took us about two years to do the prototyping, and, and we did our, our first Model 220. And that's when the economy crashed. Yeah, sure. So now we're going, okay, I, I, I thought people were going to be lining up at the door with, with you know, um, like in and out Burger, you know, with taking orders, <laughs> but that wasn't happening. Okay. So what did happen is we, we uh, tightened up and uh, tight, tightened up the purse strings and we just continued to build. Yes. And we built two more 220s and then eventually got into the nine foot. And out of this uh, came this Ravenscroft sound mm -hmm. uh, that we presented to, uh, we came to a NAMM show and presented it to uh, artists and uh, manufacturers and dealers. And we just started getting affirmation that people liked that sound. And uh, on both the 220 and the 275, uh, the design concept was, uh, do you remember when we were kids and, and, and there were cassettes, you know? Sure, music, and, sure. Uh, and you had a girlfriend and, you know, you fell in love and, and, you, and you liked all these songs together and you'd do like your favorite playlist, right? Right. And you'd give that to your, your girlfriend and, and, you know, it'd be really cool. So uh, the original Prototype 220 was, was my best of, uh, of all the rebuilding and all the pianos that I'd seen. You know, I, I liked the bass design of this piano and I liked sure. the soundboard design of this piano and I liked the bridge design of this piano and mm -hmm. it was kind of like my take of the the best of the best got it and um, we kind of lucked out that the first piano turned out pretty well mm -hmm. and then we just began to refine uh, on, on that same principle so to date how many Ravenscroft pianos exist uh, before I came to NAM, we delivered number eight Awesome. And awesome. Uh, we're in in the works of uh, 9, 10, 11, as, as we, well, not as we speak because I'm here, right. but uh, back in the shop in Arizona, there's there's three in progress. So obviously this you're not doing this 100% of your time. I am doing it 100%. You're doing it 100% of your time? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. All right, well, that's, that's fantastic. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, One more question before we hear Hugh Sung play your piano. Where do you see the Ravenscroft piano five years from now? That's a great, another, another great question. My dream is, um, as you know, right now we're building on Sauter, uh, I call it a mainframe. So right. uh, Sauter in Germany does our rims and our plates. Uh, they do the rims kind of our specification. Mm -hmm. My dream is to for this eventually to be an all-American piano. So what we're working towards right now is we're going to, instead of starting with a 220, yeah. like we did originally, we're going to start with the 275, and we're going to do our own plates, do our own rims, and basically do everything from the ground up uh, so it'll be an all-American product. Do you see a time where someone will be able to come to New York City or Philadelphia and see Spreeman pianos at a dealership? Or, sorry, Ravenscroft pianos <laughs> at a dealership? Absolutely. Uh, again, as, as the market has, has dictated, um, you know, we, we, we've done maybe one or two a year, mm -hmm. uh, but we really, in our current facility, could probably do five or six a year. Uh, we hope by my lifetime to maybe have a, a limited edition series of a thousand pianos. Fantastic. Yeah. So very much like so, Santi Falcone in the 80s. In, the, in that line, yeah. absolutely. Wonderful. Well, let's hear Hugh play, because I know he's dying to do it. Absolutely. Love to do it. Thanks. All right. Very nice meeting you, Ray. Thanks for having us.
tell me what you think. You tell me your opinions. <laughs> you were having fun. Rich? Yeah. I, I, you know, there are amazing pianos, and then there are really amazing pianos. Yes. And then there are pianos that just kind of transcend everything. Okay, so let me... <laughs> I'm still catching my breath because this this instrument is so unique. Yes. You know, what, one kind of one of the things that I love to look for is power, control, and coloring. Right. Absolutely. This Ravencroft piano, it's it's I, I hit, can hit the bass, and some pianos the bass will just kind of spin out of control and it just becomes loud and heavy. Right. This one, the bass remains clear and true and, and centered and focused without muddying anything else. And then everything else in the middle feels equally as powerful as everything down there. So you and I go, never felt like you were overplaying the No, bass. I felt like everything was completely right. in control. As loud as I wanted to get, right. it never dominated. It never lost its character. Right. It's, it's probably the most balanced piano I have ever experienced. It's so here's incredible. Yeah. What is it that's different about the Ravenscroft piano to you than most other instruments you play? I have to say, it has its own unique voice. I don't right. think I've ever heard a piano quite like this. You know, it. it I, you know, how should I put this? You know, you can. It's almost like a, a, a hue of color right. that you've just never seen before. How do I describe it? I'm not quite right. sure. I get it. You know, it's, it. it's just a. You know, American pianos can have a very meaty bass. Right. European piano pianos can have a kind of a very light, almost you know, a, a delicate flavor. With, it, a, with, it, a, with a majesty. To with it. a majesty. Yes. Right. 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 There, there's, but there's an elegance to them. Yes. This piano crosses all divides and just is like power, elegance, majesty, everything kind of all in one. It's it it's. It's a unique experience. It's really amazing. Well, I'll tell you, it was worth hearing this piano. It was worth me playing it, although we wouldn't want to put that on video. <laughs> and it was worth hearing you play it. Well, I, you know, I, I, I wish there were thousands and thousands of these pianos, but I, that's part of what makes this piano so unique. And, that's right. And I, I'm, I'm so glad we had a chance to share this unique piano with you so that you can kind of see what it's like when one man obsesses this much over an instrument. This is the result you get. It's pretty amazing. So we're looking forward to seeing more Ravenscroft pianos in the future. Yes, and from what he wanted, what I understand, that each of them are going to be unique and different, too. That's right. So That's we'll right. have to do some more Ravenscroft piano episodes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much for playing. Oh, thank you. Yes. I'm so glad you had a chance to experience this. And thank you for watching this episode of Piano Tastings. I'm Rich Gallasini. And I'm Hugh Sung. See you next time. Stay tuned for more episodes. And remember, Give us your, uh, your your opinions, give us your quotes, give us your feelings on the quote below. Oh, I'm going to swoon now. Uh. <laughs>